Earlier in this unit, we discussed how our programs would need to store values to perform their computations. So variables are memory locations whose contents can vary over time and are used throughout the program to represent different pieces of information that, that our program needs. So for example, if I had, as shown here on this slide, the variable input number and I calculate a new number from that, I can, can perform a calculation using those two variables and be able to store the result somewhere for some use later in my program. So a variable name is just an identifier representing that place in memory where I'm holding the values that my program might need. So the way that we name a variable is very important. So the variable must have a continuous sequence of letters and numbers or punctuation characters without spaces. We usually must begin with a letter and the rest of the variable can be named with other letters, numbers, and, and underscores. Uh, this often depends upon the language, but in general, that's the rules that we can use in terms of writing the names of our variables. There's two suggested guidelines. So sometimes variables may have multiple names. So when there's, for example, two words representing a single variable, we can't have spaces in the variable name, so we have to put those two words together. But something called camel case is a specific naming guideline where we would take the second name and capitalize that letter of that second word. So in variable names that have two words, we would have that second word beginning with an uppercase first letter. And variable names also should suggest appropriate meaning for the intention or the purpose of the variable. So just labeling everything variable X is not very informative compared to naming, naming the variable with something useful, such as, for example, in a tax application, you know, income or you know, different kinds of things related to tax brackets that have specific variable names. When we're writing our program, we need to store values into variables and so the idea of an assignment statement is very important in programming languages. So as you can see here, on the right-hand side of this assignment statement, where the equal signs appears, I'm taking some input number, multiplying it by 2, and storing the result in another variable called calculate answer. So there's two memory locations involved here, two variables, input number and calculate answer. And the way that this works is I take the right-hand side, input number times 2, I retrieve from storage the value of input number, multiply it by 2, and then I place the value back into the variable calculate answer. So there's two specific actions here. Computing the result of multiplying input number by 2, and then storing the value into the variable calculate answer. So the equal sign in this case is being designated as the assignment operator. The assignment operator is not an equality operator that we would have in terms of general mathematical expressions. So there's a, a difference here, and the particular difference also is that once I compute the value on the right-hand side, I overwrite or erase the previous value of the variable. For example, if input number was 6 and I multiply that by 2 to get 12, whatever value was previously in calculate answer will be lost and the value 12 will then be stored for calculate answer. So the assignment operator has this semantics of erasing the previous value in memory of a variable. So here's an exercise to think about which really helps to test our understanding of the assignment statement. So assume that we have two variables x and y and what we would like to be able to do is to swap the values of those two variables. So whatever value was inside of x will then be transferred to y and vice versa. So before taking a peek at the, at the next slide, try to work out on, a, on scratch paper what series of assignment statements you could write that would allow you to swap the values of x and y. So go ahead and hit pause on your recorder and try to write down a series of statements just using assignment and the two variables x and y that would allow me to swap the values. This may be challenging if you've never thought of this before, but kind of struggle a little bit with it and then we'll come back and look at a solution on the next slide. So go ahead and hit your uh, pause button and consider this particular challenge. When many people encounter this challenge for the first time, 
The solution that they give is often what you'd find on the top of the screen. So this actually makes somewhat sense, a logical sense, because I'm copying y into x, and I'm copying x into y, and that has some kind of notion of perhaps swapping the values. But given the semantics of the assignment statement, this actually does not work. So let's try to understand why that's the case. So if I assume that x is 3 initially and y is 5, when we're done with these two statements, we should have the value swapped so that x moves from 3 to 5 and y moves from 5 to 3. But actually, these two statements do not accomplish that goal. So let's look at the bottom of this slide in this table where I have the values of x and y and the statement from above that's being executed. So there's the initial values there of x being 3 and y is 5. Then that very first statement, x equals y, I take the value of 5 from y and I'm overwriting the 3 and now x is 5. So that second row there where x equals y, I now have x equal to 5 and y equal to 5. And then in the next case, I come through and I do y equals x. So in this case, I take the value of x, which is now 5, and I copy it over to y. So y is already 5 still, so it doesn't change. So the end result is that both x and y are 5. It did not accomplish the goal of actually swapping so that x is 5 and y is 3. It actually duplicated 5 across both variables. So the semantics of the assignment statement is really the challenge here. That very first statement, when I copied y into x, I actually destroyed the previous value of x, and I could not retrieve it back. So I'm copying 5 back into y with that second statement. So think about the logic of this for just a moment and convince yourself why this solution doesn't work. There's two sample solutions here that work. The one on the left is generally the one that most people come up with when they realize that assignment, the assignment statement overwrites values, so what we need is a temporary space to hold the value of one of them before it's actually erased. So in solution one, before I overwrite x with y, I first copy x's value into another variable called z. And then when I perform the copy from y to x, I still have z representing the original value of x, so I can copy z then into y. So that's one solution. So go ahead and do the pencil and paper activity of trying this out on your own, just like on the last slide, and walk through the value of x being 3 and y 5 and convince yourself that solution 1 actually works. We'll do this together on the next slide, but I'd like you to try it on your own. And then the solution 2 that we see on the right-hand side is pretty clever. So this has no need for a temporary variable like the first solution where we introduced z. This just used mathematical properties of addition and subtraction to use an intermediate kind of value implicitly. So Here's three separate statements involving just x and y and some identity functions here with the values and how to compute the swapping using this. In solution one, when we use an intermediate variable z, we start off with x is 3 and y is 5 and we don't care what value z is. And so the first statement z equals x will copy the value of x into z. So z then becomes 3. So I have x is 3, y is 5, and z is 3. Now I can perform what we did previously and that first statement on, on the, the naive solution where I'm copying y into x. So when I do x equals y, the value 5 from y is being copied into the value for x. So both x and y are 5 and z remains 3. Then the final step is to copy the intermediate value of z into y. So I take z which is 3 and copy that into y. So the, the end result is that both x and y have been swapped. So x moves from 3 to 5, and y moves from 5 to 3. So the second solution is a little bit more clever and uses mathematical properties rather than an intermediate value. So initially, x is 3 and y is 5, as, as before. And then I have the first statement, x equals x plus y. So I take on the right-hand side of the assignment statement, x plus y, and I add those two together, so that would result in 8, and I copy the value 8 into x. So I overwrite the previous value of 3 with 8 for x. And then the statement after that is y equals x minus y. So the previous value of y was 5, the new value of x is 8, so I compute 8 minus 5, which is 3, and that becomes the new value for y. 
So after that second line is computed, x is 8 and y is 3. A final line then will subtract y from x. So if x equals x minus y, I take the x minus y would, would result in 8 minus 3, which is 5, and I copy the value 5 into x. So the end result here is that x is 5 and y is 3, which also demonstrates the desired result of swapping the values. So two different solutions, one using intermediate variable, one using mathematical property, but the very important idea of how the assignment operator works was the goal of this particular exercise. Another important thing in discussing variables is the data type that the variable represents. So most computer languages allow variables to represent different values of all kinds of types from numeric uh, values that would be, for example, integers or floating point or real numbers down to other types of values such as characters or strings of characters. So when we declare a variable in a programming language like SNAP, we can say what type of value that variable will store. This is very useful for helping us to make sure that we're doing correct things with each variable. We're not adding things that should not be inappropriately performed. And it helps us to also understand the meaning behind some of the variables. So a variable that's an integer, I know the values that it can have, and it helps me understand the meaning of that variable in the sense of taking the variable name into consideration as well. So variables and data types are very important in programming languages. And we needed to have that understanding. Your, your students need to be able to understand this in order to write just uh, their very first program. So this was a lesson that was designed to highlight that need and the important role that the assignment statement has and the peculiar semantics that it has of overwriting the value. It's not an equality symbol. It's actually overwriting the value, what's on the left, with the evaluation of the expression on the right.